All right. Hello. This is Nicole Whitlock with Ecom Sellers Podcast. And I have with me my awesome, my amazing co host on this journey, Kelly, the Ecom Mom Ward. And Kelly and I are in Texas, so we just want to give y'all a heads up. First of all, we can't seem to get our power grid issue worked out. <laughs> <laughs> we have had a lot of consecutive 100 degree days. So if in the middle of this broadcast, uh, you lose us, we lose you. Grace and mercy. Just some grace and mercy because it's been crazy. So Kelly, what have you been up to? Just working and um, kind of uh, looking at another uh, nursing agency to work through. So I've been working with that and okay. also, you know, um, with my current job, it's my yearly eval time. So I have to do all this, take all these tests to know to show that I know about nursing stuff, you know. Yeah. You have to do it. <laughs> so that been listing on my stuff on eBay and um also uh my computer, my desktop computer in my in my office is like gone crazy. So I it's just this big rock in my it doesn't work right now. Oh so I get my husband to work on it. <laughs> So if they have my laptop, I can do stuff on. So well, I'm glad your laptop is working. Yeah. So I have been walking around for the last several days with this thing. This is like, it's it's very wet on the bottom because of the fact that the water has melted on the inside. But this is an ice pack, guys. And I put it on my awesome wrist. So my hand is super swollen. My wrist is super swollen. I can barely move it. I can't bend it. Um, oh. It's been this way since Friday. And I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just, it hurts. I have been on a rotation of naproxen and ibuprofen. And it is impacting my ability to get a lot of stuff done. And I hate that because, you know, this is that time of year where we're working on the Ecom Q4 Summit. I'm working on like my brother's in the other room with my son and we're working on listings back to school supplies, pulling out Halloween. And I'm like, I can't afford for this to be slowing me down. So my hand, my wrist is hurting. You might hear me go ow in the middle of this because it hurts a lot. It hurts at the, at the bend. It's very swollen. Like I've gotten, I got discoloration going on at this point. So I've been to the ER and uh, they, Gave me some medication, did a CAT scan, did an X-ray, gave me medication. And uh, so I'm going to try to see a specialist next week. But this is crazy. I don't like any parts of this. So oh, so it's impacting my performance. And uh, we are three and a half weeks until school starts. Three and a half, three and a half weeks. Three and a half weeks. Uh, Can you believe that? I really don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> my kids are out of school. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have to worry about going running trying to find 16 colored notebooks of certain colors and, you know. <laughs> Kelly said, so none of that is my problem. And I get it. None of that is your problem. So it is my problem, though. So we are trying to pull it together over here in addition to back to school and then trying to get supplies listed and trying to get you know, listings up and it's just crazy. So, well, this is the Ecom Sellers Podcast, guys. And if you don't know, we do this every Monday at 8.30 p.m. We invite you to come back and hang out with us. Share this out with a friend. Again, my name is Nicole. This is Kelly, the Ecom Mom Board. And we uh, talk about a little bit of e-commerce. So we're going to get into, we do e-commerce news, tips, and more. So we're going to get into the e-commerce news. Kelly's going to share her pieces and I will share mine. I'm going to do it with one hand because <laughs> I can't use the other one. And uh, we'll go from there. So, Kelly, the floor is yours. If my alarm goes off, I apologize. <laughs> All right. um, first is um, Amazon. You know, last week was Amazon's Prime Days. Um, they had pretty good showing. They had over 300 million items sold worldwide. 
Wow. With a savings of over $1.7 billion for customers. Wow. Uh, so just to give you a clue, Amazon has, a, has over 200 million paid Prime members worldwide. And the best-selling categories were consumer electronics, household essentials, and home. So that kind of gives you an idea of what people are shopping for right now. Um, and Google Shopping said the most searched products for, you know, looking for on sale on July 12th were TVs, like flat, and including flat screen TVs, clothes, shoes, washer and dryer sets, patio furniture. Mm. I'm going to say Alexa because mine will go <laughs> off. You know, I will say this. I do know that I know that Alexa was on sale because it's $17.99 and we got two more of them. So yes, mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> There's times where it's like I'll be watching a video on my phone and they'll say it and she turns on. I'm like, stop it. <laughs> um then mattress and box springs. Okay. Uh, air conditioners, of course. This is time of year. You, you know, you, of course, you want to get the air conditioner beginning of the summer, you know. And, and, the Nintendo, <laughs> and the Nintendo Switch. Okay. So, you know, people weren't really looking for toys right now. Right now, they're looking for home items and clothes and shoes because back to school. You know, and people, and you got the kids going off to um, college. Yes. A couple, too. Yep. So, you know, they're looking more for home goods and such. So think about that. If you want stuff to, you know, what you want to list and sell right away, you might go towards that, like dorm supplies and such. Okay. Um, Etsy. Etsy announced they rolled out a new seller app. Um, it has a photo and shipping feature. I haven't used that app. I kind of looked at it, but I, I didn't want to download it because I already have the sell on Etsy app. It's already connected to my store. So I didn't know if I could have both apps connected to my store. So I was like, I'm just gonna. But um, it basically looks like what the sell on Etsy app has. I don't know if it allows you to because with the sell on Etsy app, it's not like eBay, where you can list and then you can also look and shop off of your, your app. Sell on Etsy, all you can do is, is all just the selling part of Etsy. If you want to look at Etsy and, you know, say if you want the price, you know, you're trying to figure out a price for your, uh, what you want to sell your item at, well, then you have to have the separate Etsy app so you can buy and search items. You can't search and buy items off the sell on Etsy app. So that's just... Um, a new thing with Etsy is their new seller app. Uh, Walmart. I uh, thought this was interesting. Uh, this inter there was an article. It's like Walmart Plus appeals to different shoppers in Amazon Prime. Um, for Walmart Plus, that's more day people looking for the deals on the groceries, and I believe they get a, um, a savings on gasoline. Mm -hmm. So that's more why people want to um, join Walmart Plus. Walmart for Amazon Prime, people more want the free shipping, you know, get it next day, such. You know, I like that for like, there's been times where I'm like, I'm out of shampoo and I got to work in the morning. I don't have time to go shopping. So I can just go and order two or three bottles of my shampoo off, off of Amazon. And the next day, there they are. I don't have to go, you know, shopping or anything. Okay. Um, and, and also the access to Prime videos. And I did notice when I went to Kroger this week, Kroger is starting to get into this, this paid uh, thing. They got the Kroger Boost. So now that if you're a member of the Kroger Boost, they have like Boost and Boost Plus or whatever. You get like double gas points and a couple of other benefits. And I think like it's like, the boost is like $59 a year. And I think the boost plus is a hundred dollars a year. Okay. So um, if you're a shopper at Kroger, you know, cause 
those gas points are nice, you know. Yes. <laughs> Especially when you, of course, I have a hybrid, so, but my, you know, I only have to buy gas maybe once every two weeks. So, um, but even at 20 cents, 30 cents off per gallon, you know, makes it nice. Makes it nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Pinterest, Pinterest is launching launching new tools for sellers to entice shoppers. So everyone's like selling on Pinterest. Yeah, it's got to become a thing. They're trying to, you know, make it so you can buy off of Pinterest. I share my listings onto Pinterest. I have uh, different boards, you know, for different subjects. And when I list, I go ahead and put, and share it out to those boards to bring it traffic into my stores. You know, whether it be eBay, Etsy, I've even done it with Amazon, shared out um, like maybe some items that aren't selling as fast as I wanted them to. I'll go ahead and share the listing on on Pinterest to draw some traffic. You know, it's free right. to do. Yep. But you, you can also promote it and pay for traffic. But I just do it free because um, that's just me. I'm cheap. So... <laughs> Now the news everyone's been talking about. Um, sure, everyone, if you if you're in the reselling world and you go on Facebook and you on reselling groups on Facebook or watch reselling YouTube, you're gonna hear some stuff that you've already heard this some some of this from the United States Postal Service. Okay, some good stuff. Priority mail now includes a hundred dollars baked in insurance for priority mail domestic outbound and return service used to be fifty dollars used but you know if you bought your shipping through pirate ship you automatically got a hundred dollar insurance coverage but now it's um through everything uh through priority mail will have a hundred dollars so if you were ha selling stuff for sixty dollars before and we're like well i had to buy the extra insurance now you don't have to um it's just it's recently it has been a lot harder to win the insurance claims on to the post office a lot of people do have complained that it is harder to get those back to get that you know to win those insurance claims so the bad news is um in october possible happened last two years holiday rate hikes yes. in october yep starting last year was like this uh, it was like october 3rd through december 25th so just warning you um if you do like a flat rate shipping you might want to think about making it a little bit higher to cover that increase that our if you do calculated shipping or free shipping you might you know need to change prices of your items you know starting at that time to cover that increase in uh shipping um the big thing is uh the uh guy the joy whatever um he's ending a program that's been in there for like for 30 years which uh small small smaller sellers our shippers could purchase discount shipping through third party services via postage reselling. So if they didn't sell enough volume wise to, to like qualify for these lower prices, they can go through the third party shippers and um, get those lower shipping, deeply discounted uh, shipping costs. Um, they think it could impact companies like stamps.com and Pitney Barnes, which, you know, you, you, a lot of people use stamps.com to ship door and other places, Pitney Bowes. Um, Pitney Bowes, I, yeah. uh, I believe that's what a lot of, like the online, like Etsy and eBay and such uses for um, shipping, to get shipping labels for. Um but this, this is not the commercial-based pricing. So this is different from commercial-based pricing, which is not going away. 
Uh, I have seen sellers that had contacted uh, Pirate Chip and about this, and Pirate Chip saying it's not going to affect them. It's not going to affect their deal they have with the post office. So you might need to, you know, I know everyone's running around with like, you know, chicken little, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. But, you know, until we see exactly how this is going to affect us, I'm not going to sit there and stress about something I can't change. You yeah, know, can't change it. I can't change it. There's nothing I can really do until I know exactly how this is going to affect me. I'm not, so I'm not going to sit there, run around and say, I'm going to quit, you know, because I heard this rumor. I'm going to wait and see what happens. You know, I'm going to, going to have my ear down, but you know, I'm going to still work on my business and still make sales and such. And maybe eventually I'll have to change something. But for now, you know, until I know what's going to happen, I'm just business as usual. And that's really all I had. All right. That was a good list. I love the stats. You know I love the stats. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Amazon. Well, not just the Amazon. This, just the stats. I love the stats. I'm curious to find out about some of the other platforms as well. All right. So this thing is like a delayed response. I don't know. I think I have too many windows open. So here we go. Let me just try to, uh, there's Kelly. Nope. Kelly's back. Yeah. No. I, she is. There she is. I, think she, I don't know. This thing is just, she's, I can hear you. Okay. So let me make this the main thing. There you go. All right. So last week, last podcast, we were talking briefly, came across, uh, of course, Target Plus. So I want you guys to know Target Plus has been around for a while, and it is specifically for third-party sellers. Um, I think when uh, Walmart was picking up a lot of steam, because Walmart and third-party sellers have been around for a while as well. Target, I think, has been around since 2019. I want to say Walmart's probably been down around since 2016 or before for third-party sellers, but it just you know took off exponentially in 2019. So if you're a person that has a branded product or... Um, you want to investigate getting on Walmart, uh, sorry, Target Plus, you can do some research, but it is specifically for third-party sellers. So you can find products that they may be selling. So that may be a good option for you, something to think about, and you can look into it further. It also means that your products will appear, um, you know, on on different places so that people can buy them. But I think Target's process, you know, Walmart's process is stringent to get on the platform. Targets is even more stringent. So just be prepared for that. So tax-free weekend is upon us. It's coming up. It'll be in the next couple of weeks for here in Texas. So as you can see, August the 5th through the 7th, this is coming to us from dealnews.com. So you can do a search and go to dealnews.com and you can see the different states. So I don't know what state you're in. But Missouri, New Mexico, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Texas, and West Virginia are all August the 5th through the 7th. Uh, we actually, in our city, we start school on August the 10th. And I know there are other kids that start school the following week on um, August the 17th. Um, and then like in Kansas, I, I don't see Kansas on the list, but I think they're starting like right before us so or the beginning of that week, which is like August the 1st or something. Um, so you got Alabama is really early. So they, I don't know if that means that they are, they got out of school early because normally our back to school co coincides with when most kids are going in and out of, you know, school. So Kelly doesn't have that problem. Yeah. <laughs> back to school. My kids are still in school. They're bigger than me, but they're still in school. So um, here in Texas, typically back to school weekend coincides with when most of the school districts are, you know, about to start school. So that sounds about right, feels about right, August the 5th through the 7th. Um, and um, so Alabama is coming up on August the 15th through the 17th. Actually, it's right now. Alabama is like right now or about to end. So, or it ended, I guess. Florida, I guess, is the next one that's coming up. So the 25th, Florida. So Alabama, if you missed it, I'm sorry, guys, you already missed Alabama. Um, Tennessee, Mississippi, um, they are the 29th. 
And then there's a bunch that are starting on August the, the 5th. So um, go look for your state. If your state offers a tax-free weekend, great for you. If not, okay. But there's normally a limited number of products that you can get during tax-free weekend. And um, and it's, you know, tailored around back-to-school items. So go pay, go check into that for your specific city and see if your tax-free weekend is coming up so you're not caught off guard. And as a reseller, again, Sometimes you might be able to find some good deals uh, where you don't where you don't have to pay taxes anyway. But if you are a person that you know some some uh, stores like Target, they don't like to honor the whole <laughs> tax exempt reseller license, then tax free weekend is a great time to go get some inventory. All right, so this is one of those articles where they talk about things not to miss, and you know I love those articles where they talk about things not to miss from specific stores. This, of course, is Trader Joe's, one of my favorites. And they have lots of items here. A lot of these are frozen, but they do have some that are not frozen. So I'm going to try to get to that one. You can come and look at this article. It comes to us from The Kitchen. The Kitchen. And they got a lot of frozen stuff, but they do have some stuff that's not frozen. So let me just... They've got these chips, which do sell quite well on um, on Amazon as a reseller. They've got some facial sunscreen that they recommend. And again, Trader Joe's has things that are only available for a limited amount of time. So I would encourage you to check it out, go in there and scan one day. And even if you decide you're not going to sell it on Amazon, there are other platforms you can sell it on. But this comes to us from the kitchen. Now, there's a couple of articles um, that, um, not this one, but the next one. So Kroger Boost offers free grocery delivery and double gas rewards. I have not heard of it in our location, but it's something that they are launching. It says that they've had it, you know, they've launched it since 2021. Kelly, do you have a Boost account or have you heard about Boost in your area? I just saw it um, when I went into the Kroger a couple, like a week and a half ago. I usually just do curbside pickup with with uh, Kroger, so I haven't gone. It was like the first time I've been inside a Kroger in a in a, in a, a while. Good minute. Yeah. So I still go into stores. Yeah. Renata always tells me to stop going in stores, but I still go in stores. <laughs> <laughs> I still I go grocery think, shopping in stores, huh? I just think that I do grocery shopping in Aldi. Does I just do curbside with HEB and Kroger, and because uh, it I, to me I can save hours and, and use that to uh, do my uh, you know work more on my business since we especially since I work a full time job. You know I gotta cut hours work back where I can. Absolutely, that's a very good strategic move. Well, I have not heard about Kroger Boost in our stores yet, but it could be because I'm not paying attention or because well, maybe I just don't care. But <laughs> they do have, you know, evidently with Kroger Boost, um, there are some discounts that might be worth it. So as a reseller, you know, buying groceries and sometimes you can get some really good deals on groceries at Kroger. Um, if you are a person that sells, you know, shelf stable good, goods and you sell them in bulk. Um, this may or may not be beneficial to you. Um, I don't know as a reseller, you know, that I would take advantage of it. I I just can't see myself doing it. But just know that Kroger Boost is out there. Evidently, it's been out since November 2019. But I think they were testing it in certain places. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like supposed to be more prominent because this is a recent article from USA Today. All right. So here's some crazy news. <laughs> Two things just to be mindful of as a reseller. I just want you to be mindful of this article comes to us from the New York Post. And it's a lawyer who says that you should avoid the self-service checkouts and warns you it could cost you thousands. So I'm going to give you the short version of this article. What they are talking about in this article um, is about um, people using the self-checkout to buy things. Now, I will tell you as a reseller, a lot of people, a lot of resellers do this, is that they'll use the self-checkout, especially if they've got coupons and they have lots of volume they don't want to be told that they can't buy like you know 
50 of one thing or 20 of one thing or whatever. So they'll do self-checkout, which is fine. But what this lady is saying, this attorney is saying, and she is a criminal. Let me just get it right. I don't want to. This comes from us from, uh, from the New York Post. And she is a criminal defense attorney. Okay. And she is saying that some of the loss prevention departments, when they are trying to reconcile inventory, if they cannot figure out, let's say you bought, I don't know, 10 of a Lego toy and you did it through self-checkout. Again, this is not my article. This is New York Post and this is this criminal defense attorney. Um, what they're saying is that the loss prevention department will go, okay, uh, something's missing. Something is off. Our numbers are off. We had, you know, 11 in stock and you bought 10. So you must have stole the 11th one. So after you've checked out, they can bring you up on charges and charge you with stealing something that you didn't steal. I was like, what in the same hill as I'm reading this? And I was like, that's got to be completely crazy. That's got to be false. And she's saying that people, this has happened to some people that they've been brought up on charges after the fact, and they have to spend thousands of dollars proving that they didn't just because they may have been the person to buy the last one of the thing that's the inventory that's in stock. Now, I personally, I like I said, I don't like self-checkout, but sometimes when I'm doing retail arbitrage, I will do it. Um, I prefer to have regular checkout. So I'm just sharing this information just as a tip, what she recommends is that you keep your receipts. Now, as resellers, we keep our receipts, so mm -hmm. we should be fine. But again, if they, if you ever have, you know, get charged with something, and it could be months later, get charged. I was like, I don't even know how that's even legal, but they could charge you months later uh, for something. And so if you have the receipt for it, you can go through and work on proving that you didn't do it. So anyway, I thought this was interesting. You can look for her. Her name, she's on TikTok. And her name is Carrie Jurgen. 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 Jernica. I don't know. That's crazy. It's like I I don't mind doing self-checkout if I have one or two items. So, you know, if I have a cart full of stuff, mm -mm. no. I just thought it was well, interesting. <laughs> well, it's just because a lot of us are doing self-checkout as third-party seller. So just as a heads up, you know, you could be wrongfully charged with um, stealing something, even though you purchased, it. you purchased it. Yep. Yep. So truly innocent people using self-checkout could get charged for stealing items you rightfully purchased or never picked up. Interesting. All right. We're going to move on. Um, I also thought this one was interesting and sad, which is really sad. Um, I don't, not that we are not paying attention to the um, <laughs> Kardashians. We don't care about them. So let me just refresh because I normally bring these up and then whatever is playing, it just plays on its own. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't want that. Yeah. Okay. So this one is about um, a store being abandoned. These uh, dollars. This is becoming a thing. It, it appears to be a few times that these dollar stores are completely empty or they have closed or they're whatever. They're having a hard time keeping staff. Dollar store employees are some of the lowest paid employees and they work really, 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 really hard. And uh, turnover dollar store, Dollar Tree is really high with uh, Family Dollar and Dollar General, which is really sad. So um, now, I would just say this. If you don't retail arbitrage, be nice to the Dollar Tree employees. <laughs> Please be nice to them. Be kind. Some people are taking jobs out of necessity. And uh, some of these guys, they get pissed off and they all leave. So this has happened more than a few times that the Dollar Tree is completely abandoned or you know doesn't open. In this example, the Dollar Tree had not opened for, I think, uh, like three weeks. There was a sign <laughs> from multiple UPS sites on the front of the Dollar Tree tell them they have packages to pick up. So whatever. All right. So we are, um, I wanted to share with you a couple of things and we'll come back and talk about these a little bit more. But if you are struggling to try and figure out what you're going to do for, you know, sourcing inventory for the end of the year, there's a several different sites that currently have their 2022 holiday list up. So um, I just chose three there. I think I found about 10 different sites, but I just chose three. 
I don't know who these people are. I'm not endorsing anybody. I'm just letting you know. So this one is gro Groovy Guy Gifts. And they have a long list of things that if you're struggling to figure out what to source or sell for Q4 and you haven't gotten it together by now, then you could come and look at some of the stuff. My assumption is, is that this is probably a Shopify store and they're just using this article as a way to drive traffic to the store in this particular example. Now, the others are just regular um, websites. So this one is spy.com. And this is 101 of the best Christmas gifts for 2022. And you can scroll through this again, spy.com. You can do a search for 2022 Christmas gifts. And uh, they have a long list of specific products that they recommend. Of course, this is an affiliate website for those who are not paying attention. This is a great way if you're an affiliate marketer to start putting those up right now. So you can have affiliate links to listings and you can get paid money for them. And then you're paid in a commission. And then this one is from Good Housekeeping. It's a regular Good for housekeeping, but I know that they have affiliate links here. But anyway, they're a high-ranked <laughs> website, Good Housekeeping. And um, they have a list of holiday gifts for 2022. So they've already got that out. And you can just scroll through it. And of course, they have links to go and buy it on Amazon. And all of those links are affiliate links. So if you are not an affiliate marketer, like, uh, or if you are an affiliate marketer, you know, go ahead and put your 2022 Christmas list out. Typically around July, when they start talking about the words Christmas in July, people start putting together the 2022 list for Christmas. And so as you can see, they've got 31 of the best toys and gifts for six-year-olds, 20 totally amazing gifts for kids of all ages, 27 of the best gifts for four-year-olds, uh, 65 gifts for teens that will impress them. Again, all of that's going to be affiliate links. And then they've got lists of gifts that just continues on for mom, for your girlfriend, for grandma, for your sister. It is just bananas. So um, if you are not a person that, if you're a person that's doing affiliate marketing or you're thinking about getting into affiliate marketing, this is the time to put your affiliate articles up so that that way you can start driving traffic to those listings and start making money now. So I'm just going to put that out in the universe. And this is from Good Housekeeping, but again, Everyone is putting up their 2022 holiday gifts. A lot of them are going to be those that are going to be getting an affiliate commission. So heads up, great way to make money. And people are actually looking at these lists to come up with ideas for people that they're going to be buying gifts for. So, hey, great way to get into e-commerce without sourcing any products. <laughs> Zero product sourced here. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to go into um, our, sorry, I got so many articles up. We're going to go straight into our tips, e-commerce tips. So I hope that you found that information helpful. So we're going to go straight to our e-commerce tips. So like I said, we do e-commerce news, tips, and more. Kelly shared the news. I share some additional stuff on top of the news. And now we're going to go into e-commerce tips. So since we're talking about holiday gifts, what better thing to talk about than non-toy products? Because sometimes people are dumbfounded, stumped. They don't know what to sell. And um, these are things that people are going to be buying for the holidays. Now, despite the inflation, these are products that people are interested in. So in any case, um, share this out with a friend. Let somebody else know about the Ecom Sellers podcast and invite them to come check us out next Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and start with the list and I'm going to start with number one. So the first one is video games and accessories. There are a lot of uh, video games. People have been paying, playing video games for years, but gaming has continued to skyrocket. If you go out there and look at the stats around gaming sales and the amount of money that's made in gaming and gaming comes in so many different forms i mean now there's like betting gaming so <laughs> i mean it's betting gaming has been around but it's just like it's continuing to get uh, become a bigger and bigger deal so video games old video games old controllers this works if you're selling new stuff or if you're selling old stuff um the new stuff of course all of the different platforms nintendo what's the other ones <laughs> i know about nintendo. PlayStation, xbox. playstation xbox yes 
all of them, you know, they got to release the new version of whatever, just like the iPhone. Like every time a new iPhone comes out, people lose their minds. So the same thing with these gaming stations. And there are people that have the older gaming stations and they figure out how to make it work. And they have, you know, some of the older games, most of the games that kids get now, they can get them online. They don't have to buy a game thing, but there's a lot of them that they still buy those because they're not buying something new every single year. So with that being said, the all of the games all of the accessories we're talking about everything from the chair that they do gaming in the controllers the headphones and the microphone the whatever else the the webcam the trying to think of all the stuff there's just a lot you can just go google video game accessories and just see what comes up so do you want to add anything else to that kelly that's just also video game branded stuff there's like you know, there's like, I've seen Nintendo controller looking ornaments for Christmas trees. I've seen, you know, I've sold uh, sweat, sleek pants with, with, super, with Super Mario on it. I sold them used. And, you know, I paid a little bit for them and I, and I sold them, you know, for 12 bucks, you know, plus shipping. So I know it's you know, not a lot, but it's still sold quickly. Yeah, so don't overlook this. This is one of those that if you're trying to figure out what to sell, um, it's an opportunity. All right, the next one, Kelly. Um, small appliances and cooking supplies. Um, this goes for people wanting to buy, you know, the blender that the wife wants or the, you know, coffee pot and cooking supplies because what do we all do when it starts getting cold? We start baking and cooking. You got Thanksgiving, you got Christmas and all the different holidays, you know, Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and everything. And everyone has those uh, family recipes they want to cook, but you know, they need certain supplies to cook it with. They need a certain pan, they need a certain type of dish or something. So, you know, these are good for gifts and they're also good for just regular cooking around their house. Absolutely. So, think. Go and cookbook. Go ahead. <laughs> I said, and I uh, just was thinking about cookbooks. You have like the Christmas cookie cookbook and the Christmas, you know, on the healthy Christmas food, you know, healthy holiday food cookbooks and such, you know, because people want to stay on their diets but still enjoy the, uh, taste of the holidays absolutely and that is actually a great um great christmas bundle as a gift think about a cookbook and a specific set of pans or a cookbook and a specific like some people do not want to do they don't want anything fried so then they might buy an air fryer so an air fryer with a cookbook that's a great bundle or you know different a specific set of pans or type of pans ceramic or whatever they happen to be and a specific cookbook to cook recipes with those pans so those people that are wanting to cut back on fat or grease or frying or you know or teflon they don't want any more of that <laughs> then that might be a good bundle idea as we're continuing to look at you know what's available so you know it's not just potentially just the uh, the small appliances and the supplies but it might be a bundle opportunity hidden in there. All right. So the next one is personalized gifts. So those that are doing print on demand, this is like, it never ends. People want engraved everything, everything from engraved jewelry to watches to uh, they want personalized t-shirts and jackets and blankets. And I mean, you could go through the list. Uh, a phone case cover. Um, my brother and I were just talking about my son Nicholas and that it, he's going to be going to school and we're, I'm going to do something so that he has a phone case cover that has his name on the outside of it. And um, some pertinent information might be on the inside that's specific for him to use. And if something happens for somebody to be able to communicate with us. So you know, there's a lot of personalization that is available for people to, you know, it, it could be any number of things, a glasses case cover, um, 
just think about all the cool stuff. But then uh, around the holidays, like people will get engraved stuff that's like engraved towels to go into the bathroom. So think about all of those types of products where you can personalize them in some kind of way. Um, <laughs> the other thing I was thinking about, someone, I were, think it was last year that they had, they did print on demand and they took a picture of the person, like people could send in pictures of their dog and have their dog superimposed on a t-shirt or pajamas or whatever. And I just remember seeing this one picture where they went overboard with the picture of the dog multiple times all over the pajamas, which is a bit much. But the point is, <laughs> people <laughs> want personalized stuff. <laughs> Go ahead, Kelly. Um, and just uh, if you're able to put it out right now, people are looking for personalized shirts for kids for school. Like, you know, I'm a third grader, you know, you know, it's that kind of stuff. I've seen multiple posts on Facebook today in my area because school's starting in less than a month here. And people are looking for T-shirts for their kids for school. So, Especially that first yeah. day of school picture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, you know, third day, you know, super third grader shirt or something, you know. So there you go, guys. There you go, Kelly. The phone accessories. Um, lots. It, it, it seems like they come out with all sorts of new things to do with your phone every year. I mean, I remember our first cell phone. You know, we could text, but you had to push three, you know, like three times, to get to the letter Q. You know, you had to push this button. You know, five times to get to this letter. You know, so they have. Our phones are basically little computers in our pockets right now, but, you know, maybe someone's, you know, they're getting into making TikTok videos and they want to get, you know, the lights to go with the phone so they could have perfect lighting or they want, maybe they're, they want uh, Bluetooth earphones, Bluetooth speakers, you know, all sorts of different things that, you know, Maybe someone's getting, you know, the parents told them or told you that you're, you know, they're getting them a new phone. So you're going to get them some accessories to go with their new phone. So just so great ideas there. Yeah. And Actually, I don't teams. know what, I have no idea what the deal is, but if you go and look at the Google and Google Trends, phone sales are high right around the time of back to school because parents are buying the kids new phones for starting school, whether they be elementary, middle school, high school, or college. But the other thing is around Christmas. And I know it's because most of the big carriers, they offer deals around those times, really good, crazy deals. And those are their like deal time. So that's also the best time, like to get a new phone, um, to, you know, buy all the accessories, but, you know, refurbished phones or selling existing phones, so if you got some old phones, I know there's a lot of places where you can drop it off and get paid. Like I think Walmart has those in-store kiosks where you can sell your phone back to them and they use it. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are also selling phones uh, that you can you can find them on eBay. You can find them on Facebook Marketplace as well. So something to think about. All right, electronics and accessories. Back to the accessories. Accessories seem to be a big deal. Um, <laughs> so electronics, back to school. Uh, there's, you know, you have electronics that people are going to be buying then. But again, the stores, the big box stores like Best Buy and stores like that are going to be having laptops on sale. And especially like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you're going to see like these deals where laptops are going to be um, on sale. Tablets are going to be on sale. Uh TVs are going to be on sale, different types of electronics that people might buy. So we've literally talked about three different types of electronics already. We we're talking about the gaming, video gaming. That's, you know, there's all of that. And the accessories that go with that is all electronics, phones, you know, all of that. And that's all electronics as well. And so, and then not necessarily small appliances, but there might be some level of electronics that you put into your kitchen. Kelly mentioned um, during Prime Day that Alexa was popular. <laughs> That's because she was $17.99, okay? 
So uh, the reason why I know that is because I got two. But the point is, the point is, is that, you know, there are things that are going to be uh, products that people are going to want to buy or need to get or feel like they need to get, including like the ring doorbells and stuff like that. Like all electronics, electronics are going to be popular this year. Yeah, I love my ring doorbell and I have that little Alexa, the echo <laughs> gun that, that has the screen on it. So if someone rings the doorbell. I, it goes, it shows me on my screen and I'm, I can see, yeah, if I'm sitting there cooking something, someone rings my doorbell, I can see who's at the door before I even get to the door. Cause I can see it on my, on my, uh, little echo screen. So there you go. But, um, yeah. And you know, so, you know, that's stuff like for the guys, they want all that, you know, stuff where they're, you know, they like all, all that electronic stuff and, Whereas a friend of mine is like, I would never have an Alexa, a Google Nest, or any of that in my house. I don't need anybody listening to me. So they've gone the opposite direction and the level of paranoia and everybody's out to get them. So I understand. It's okay. If you're there, that's all right. No judgment here. So even though that sounded very judgy. So <laughs> all right, Kelly, the floor is yours. Apparel and footwear. Oh, yeah. Um I always made sure, especially my kids, they at least got one outfit every Christmas. They, they might not like to open up that clothes, but yeah, I made sure they got one outfit, you know, or they maybe the new Jordans came out, you know, that's always something that people want. Maybe someone got into golf this year. And so you got to get in some golfing, golfing shoes. Um, and then you got the, uh, I always favorite ugly Christmas. I, I sweater. Those, yeah. Oh, yeah. I look for those ugly Christmas sweaters all year round and then starting in um probably the next couple, um, probably by the end of September, I'll be starting to list them. Um some of those ugly sweaters can especially vintage ones, especially like the older ones, can catch a pretty penny, you know. You just have to make sure that they're not falling apart or nothing. But if you find them in good condition, get them up and listed because people want, you know, I know the last couple of years they have been doing as many uh, Christmas parties, but with the way it's kind of calmed down now, hopefully there's no other well, more waves or anything, but you know, people are going to start having their Christmas parties again and those ugly Christmas sweaters going to, Rear their heads out. And yeah. Then also people can also want to do um their Christmas cards. You know, like yeah, everyone sends out the little postcards with their family on it, and they're all wearing matching plaid pajamas. You know, so there's another thing right there is uh, pajamas, Christmas pajamas. Everyone wants their pajamas for Christmas morning, and they want the cute ones for the kids. Uh, I know I, I look at the stores all the time for the Nick and Nora. I find the Nick and Nora pajamas. I sell them used all the time. So that's another thing. There you go. I'm just saying footwear, when you think about for the holidays, for sure, uh, pajamas with uh, slippers or robes, pajamas and slippers, you know, sets. And then like she said, she mentioned all the stuff that I was going to mention. So we're going to keep that entire list. But, you know, think about the pajama stuff, too, not just the the picture with the pajamas. But, you know, Christmas morning, people opening up their presents and there being a new set of pajamas in there, new, uh, maybe even a new jacket or something like that, new uh, slippers to walk around the house. That's a pretty common one, especially if they're holiday based. <laughs> holiday slippers. I think I brought my brother some moose slippers some years ago. And then also... Go ahead. We don't think about down here that much, but snow items, snow boots, snow coats, snow, you know, outfits for the kids. You know, we don't have to think about it much here because if we get snow, we, we get snow maybe once every couple of years. But, you know, you go to other places and they get, it starts snowing in October. So they want their snow boots. They need snow gear. Maybe they're traveling from texas to colorado to go skiing and so they want their ski gear they want their 
hats, the gloves, the 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 ski boots and such. So there's also those apparel. All of that, the holidays, it's gonna be a lot of buying of clothes and shoes. All right, so candy and food. Um, can't stress that enough. We already talked about smaller pounds, appliances, and cook cooking utensils or accessories. Look, people are going to be buying candy like crazy and or things that they can cook. Um, you know, Thanksgiving, there's going to be stuffing and mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese. All this stuff is shelf stable. Even if you buy, if you, if you do homemade, except for if you like a block of cheese, you're probably not selling that or the milk. But the other stuff you can sell, <laughs> the seasoning, the spices, Think about all of the seasoning and spices to make the turkey and or the ham and or any other alternative hens uh, that you can be selling. Um, all of those things that uh, people might be cooking with, um, baking, lots of pies and cakes and cookies and things that have a holiday theme around them where there's like, oh, okay, we're going to get the red and green m ms and we're going to make cookies or maybe we're going to make a rice crispy mousse and we're going to use the red and green like you can go to pinterest and see all the holiday food stuff but the point is, is that people are going to be buying that and they're also going to be buying candy they are going to buy a lot of candy you're going to see candy everywhere you're going to see candy for halloween you're going to see some candy for thanksgiving there will be uh lots of candy around for christmas like everywhere it's going to be bananas <laughs> Pumpkin spice, pumpkin spice season is upon us, and people want their pumpkin spice. There are, I actually, I had pumpkin spice coffee this morning because I have the the flavoring that you can put in the coffee to so to make it pumpkin spice. So yeah, some people have some people have pumpkin spice year round, but pumpkin season spice season is upon us there's even people who do print on demand pumpkin spice t-shirts and themed yep. stuff yeah pumpkin spice is right there it's at labor after right after labor day you're just going to see it everywhere it's going to saturate you may even see it actually on, on september the first but it's right there it's right upon us <laughs> all right Holiday decor, indoor and outdoor. So this is especially Halloween. Halloween day go crazy with the decorations. You can go down some people's house and looks like they had, you know, professionals come out and do their house with with looking at all mummies and stuff. You have the blow up stuff that people buy. You know, the they light up and blow up or the the blow molds. You know, the the uh, fake spider webs, and then you have Christmas. Uh, you have the lights, and you have the they have blow up molds and blow up things that wave around in the air. Um, some people have stuff that plays lights and stuff to music, all sorts of stuff. And then there's the stuff indoors: your Christmas tree, Christmas tree skirts. You have. Uh, you know, people, some people change their whole house for every season. They have, <laughs> yes. Different, yes, I'm talking, my mom does this. She has a tree that she has. It's a little, like, two foot, three foot tree that sits in her foyer. And every, every season, there's one, she has a patriotic theme on it. Then she has an Easter theme on it. She has... So people buy all these decorations. And then she has a little area where she has different, different kind of decorations that she has made um, for each season. So people go all out, especially for Halloween and Christmas. And, you know, if you find even home stuff that has Hanukkah stuff on it, you know, that's going to be a big pool because you really don't find Hanukkah stuff decorations too often or kwanzaa you know any of the holidays thanksgiving people go by buying like you know turkey stuff that has turkeys on it they used to do pilgrims and indians but that's kind of 
gone to the wayside. They said they more like the autumn theme, the leaves and the acorns and those autumn colors. So those are the things you want to be start looking out for. There you go. And I agree with Kelly on the outdoor decor. People do go crazy. I call them the carcasses on the front lawn. But yes, there's a whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> there's a whole thing. You know, you got doctor's offices, dentist offices. You've got daycares. They will get by the window clings to put on the windows. And the kids walk in and it's right there and it's decorated. Doctor's office, dentist office, insurance office, lawyer's offices. You name it. You could go into their office and there'll be all kinds of stuff that might be present or little things like just little decorations here and there. Um, so it, it, even I think we went and got an oil change and they had some holiday stuff at the oil change. Shop. Like it's, it is everywhere. It's universal. And it's bananas. It's not going to go away. And so if you're looking for something to sell, you can definitely sell a lot of holiday decor. That's for sure. Yep. I guess my dog had something to say too. He just <laughs> and we thank you for that. <laughs> so, with that being said, this is what we want to say: uh, the Ecom Q4 Summit is right around the corner. It's actually happening in two weeks, and we want you to go get registered. It's August the first through the fourth. We have an amazing lineup of speakers that are going to help you to get ready. For fourth quarter, we're going to continue talking about fourth quarter. We want you to be ready. We want you to be successful. We want you to make money this Q4. So we want you to go register. Pre-registration is open. The summit is August the 1st through the 4th. Um, probably later on this week, you should see the list of the speakers that are going to be speaking. But go get registered. Um, this is the, the time to help you to get ready for Q4. And please invite a friend. Let somebody else know that's in this e-commerce space that wants to learn how to sell online or is already selling online. Or maybe somebody you know didn't have a really good, you know, first quarter and second quarter. And they're really trying to make up some ground in the third quarter and fourth quarter. Or others that may have been impacted by the economy and they feel like, I don't understand why I'm not getting any sales. I don't understand why I'm not making money you know, or the recession is impacting their their business sales, then come to the Q4, uh, Q4 Summit. Like I said, we have an amazing lineup of speakers. I'm always grateful uh, for the speakers. Next year will be our fifth annual. We're really going to go big next year. But this year, you know, there's still uh, a lot of opportunity. Clearly, as you heard Kelly talk about the stats around Prime Day, people are still buying regardless of what's happening with the economy. They're still buying and they may be buying on specific platforms. So maybe you need to come up with a new strategy. Maybe you need to figure out a different platform. Maybe you need to figure out a different method of e-commerce. Again, it's August the 1st through the 4th. And we want you all to come and hang out with us. So you can go to www.ecomq4summit.com to register. Again, www.ecomq4 summit to get registered right now for the Ecom Q4 Summit. All right. So with that being said, I know we talked about a bunch of stuff. We're going to go back. I'm going to try to get me and Kelly back. Let's just see. <laughs> and we're back. All right. Well, this is the Econ Sellers Podcast, and we do this every Monday at 8.30 p.m. We invite you to come back and share this with a friend. We do have some amazing giveaways for the Econ Q4 Summit, so look for those. And with that, we're going to say goodbye for now. So my name is Nicole Whitlock. And I'm Kelly B. Come on more. This is the Econ Sellers Podcast, and we will see you again next Monday. We'll say goodbye for now. Bye, y'all.